Hey friends, in this video I share 10 advanced tips for how to use ChatGPT more productively. By the way, if we haven't met yet, hello, my name is Gregor Schafroth and I'm a Swiss management consultant turned AI entrepreneur. On this channel, I share productivity and AI tips that help you get your work done better and faster. If that sounds interesting, you might consider subscribing to the channel. And with that, let's jump right into the video. Tip number one is to customize your ChatGPT so it behaves in a certain way how you want it. So let's say I'm practicing Chinese, which is actually true. And I want to just give it a word and then get back an example sentence and the translation of this word. So if I do that right now without doing anything and I enter the word, for example, huochi, which means uh, train, it doesn't know what to do with it. So it gives me a random answer, which is even totally written in Chinese. So that's not really what I want. So I could now write here in this normal chat field what I would like. But if I want to have this certain behavior every time I start a new chat, what I'll do instead is I'll go up here to the top right and I click on customize chat GPT. And now in here, I can add some instructions how I would like ChatGPT to behave every time. And I can also co uh, hover here over this information and get some additional instructions. So let me fill in uh, some example here, how I could want it to behave. When I give you a Chinese word, give me uh, the PIN, which is translation, uh, or that's the transliteration. And I also want the translation as a response. And then a very short sample sentence also with P and translation. And then I can also in this next field, give it an example, how I would like it to answer. And so here I enter the word shiqi, which is a uh, century and give it an example sentence, how it should respond. So now I'm saving that and I'm just starting a new chat right here. And so now I'm just entering the same word for train uh, again in Chinese that I did before. And instead of a long explanation and sentence in Chinese, I get this nice translation here exactly how I want it. And I briefly had to delete the old chat to make this work. So if you change your custom chat GPT here, you might need to delete your old chat if there is some exact overlap with the topics that you're talking about. All right, tip number two is to turn on memory for ChatGPT. What that does is it lets ChatGPT remember the conversations you have with it. And so it can reuse information that you gave it in previous prompts. And the way to do that is also here. And then you go to settings and you will go to personalization and here you have memory and you can turn this on right here. All right. And to show you how that works, let me open a new window here and write a new prompt as if I were using ChatGPT normally. Let's say I love Tesla cars. I have 50,000 US dollar. What model would you recommend me? And so what you'll see here is that it updates the memory and you see when you hover over this, that I love Tesla cars and I have a budget of 50,000 for purchasing a Tesla. And if I might ask it questions about money again in the future, it will have this knowledge available. If you have memory turned on for a while, there is also a fun little thing you can do. Let me show you by opening a new chat and that prompt goes like this. Based on what you know about me, draw a picture of what you think my current life looks like. And uh, I only gave it this information with the Tesla and the 50,000. So let's see what it comes up with. But if you use ChatGPT over a long time, it will have a lot of very interesting detail. And you might even be surprised how much ChatGPT knows about you. And yeah, indeed, in this case, it uh, thinks I'm a total Tesla fan, which is actually true, but uh, perhaps that's not totally my life. All right, tip number three is to use ChatGPT on your smartphone. So for example, I can take my iPhone here and go to the App Store and here simply search for ChatGPT. 
And now here you need to be careful because the top listed product is mostly some kind of competitor and they will charge you even though you can use it for free if you just use the official app. So you need to scroll down a bit and then choose this official one here by OpenAI. And I already have it so I'm not going to download it again but that's exactly where you get it. And then once you installed it you just open in and you log in with the same account uh, like you have it on your computer. You can also log in with Google again and then you have the same chats that you have also in your conversation history in your computer. And so for example I can ask it what is the latest Tesla product? And just like with the computer, I can easily get my answer now also on the go. And if I want to continue this conversation later in the browser on any other device, I can easily do so as well. Now, tip number four is to not only use the text based interface, but actually use voice, which is really convenient when you don't have a free hand or you're just not as fast in typing with this small keyboard here. And the way to use that is to just press on the bottom right button here, this kind of black circle with the lines. And I can now just start chatting. How old is Elon Musk? Elon Musk was born on June 28, 1971, making him 53 years old as of now. His entrepreneurial ventures, like SpaceX and Tesla, have cemented his role as a leading figure in technology. All right. And uh, if you're lucky, you have advanced voice mode where you can have a real conversation and interrupt it and basically talk to it like a human. This is still the older version that you saw right here. And you might need to get a premium paid account to use the advanced voice mode. All right, back to the computer. Now, tip number five is to ask for step-by-step -step direction. For example, let's imagine I'm still working in consulting and our client is Pepsi and they ask us to make a competitor report about Coca-Cola in Switzerland. So now I can use ChatGPT and get some help on how to create that report. For example, give me step-by-step -step guidance on how to write a competitor report about Coca-Cola in Switzerland for our client Pepsi. And if I do that, it won't give me the direct answer, but it will tell me the steps that I need to take, how to answer these questions. And if it then turns out that some of these steps are easy to answer by ChatGPT, I can ask it in a next prompt about some specific questions like that. So for example, how does Coca-Cola perform in the Swiss market? I might not totally rely on ChatGPT to answer this question, but I can get a first impression by uh, asking it this. And here is still answering, so let me block this because it gives quite extensive guiding, but I can just ask this follow-up question and then I get details and have this as a start, which I can always scroll up and then just follow this step-by-step -step guidance. Tip number six is to use ChatGPT to generate templates. So for example, now Christmas is coming. So perhaps you want to send lots of Christmas cards to your clients, friends, family, whatever. You can ask ChatGPT, please give me a template for Christmas cards that I can send to all my clients. And I can give additional detail here. If I turn the memory feature on here, it will already know more and know what kind of greeting I want to send. And then it gives me this here. And then what I can do after this, if I have a specific message that I really like, I can still copy it, paste it in, and then I just say, please uh, adapt this to client, uh, whatever, Harry Potter, who is our top client and lives in London. And then with this additional information and even more information, uh, you can exactly have the text filled out. And this way is very productive to generate a lot of messages that are very similar to each other. Of course, this is also a great way to generate templates for emails or Slack messages or any kind of communication that you need to do regularly in a digital way. Tip number seven is to use ChatGPT to get specific information or a summary out of an existing text or document. 
And so for example, to show this off here, I can go on a new tab. I go to the investor relations of Tesla and I'm getting, for example, here, this uh, latest shareholder deck that I can just download. Let's save that on the desktop. And then back in ChatGPT, I just click on this paper clip. I upload from computer. I choose this Tesla update. And then based on that, I can ask it any kind of question. So for example, what was Tesla's profit in the last quarter? And it will read the document and extract exactly the information that I'm looking for. Besides specific information, if I just need a summary, I can also just do, uh, give me a summary of the whole document, please. Be very brief. Because if I don't say be very brief, it might write a very long text. This way it's likely just one or two paragraphs. And so here you see it very uh, conveniently extracts for me interesting information. Tip number eight is to use ChatGPT as a translator. Let's for example say I really like this information that I got here about Tesla, but I need to send it to someone who only speaks German. So then I can say provide me the last answer, but in German please. And there are many different ways to phrase this question of course, but this is now the exactly same text is just written in German. And translations tend to be very accurate as long as it's in a supported language. So for example, Swiss German, which is also my native language, is not supported by ChatGPT, so it won't be able to write Swiss German. But any of the 50 plus officially supported languages by ChatGPT work totally great for this. Advanced ChatGPT tip number nine is to use it for role playing. Let's say, for example, I'm applying for a new job and I want to practice my interview. So what I can do here is I can just again upload a document. And in this case, I'm going to upload my old CV here, which has all information about me. And then if I have a specific job that I'm applying for or even interview guidelines with questions, I can upload that as well. And I can give some more specific information. And then I ask it, please pretend to be um, the interviewer for this job. And here I'm just gonna add uh, strategy consulting in a Swiss company. And uh, ask me questions as if I was the candidate. And then you see, you get questions here and this is also really nice to do together with someone else. So if you have a friend who can help you, they can read this question and pretend to be the interviewer. And what you can also do, if you record the whole interview, you can then get a transcript and again put it into ChatGPT and ask it for an analysis what went well and what didn't went well. So in that way, ChatGPT is amazing for role playing and then giving you suggestions how to improve. Last but not least, tip number 10 is to ask ChatGPT to help you with writing prompts. So let's for example say you regularly want to prompt ChatGPT to write you an email for um, kind of a sales situation where you try to sell a product. And so what you can do here is you can tell ChatGPT to ask you questions that you then answer and based on the answer and information you provide, ChatGPT again provides you with the prompt that you want. And then you have it ready every time. So for example, I want to write a sales email to my client. I need a prompt that I can always use to generate this sales email. Please ask me five questions so you can give me that prompt. And in an ideal situation, you already give it more details here, but I don't have that right now. I'm making it up. So uh, let's see what we can do. What is the main product or service you're offering for the sales email? I'll just say uh, Tesla cars. Number two, who is your target audience? 
um, young, cool people who like technology and the environment. Number three, what actions do you want your clients to take after reading the email? For example, let's say schedule a call. Number four, what are the key benefits or features of your product service that you want to highlight? Uh, for example, best self driving software on the market, best safety rating on the market, coolest design, environmentally friendly, cheap to operate, and I could go on here. But uh, let's leave it at this. And number five, do you prefer a formal or conversational tone for your sales email? Um, then I will say conversational. And just to make sure it gives me what I want, I will end this by now, please give me the prompt that I can use. And so with this kind of guidance, I will get a prompt, generate a friendly and conversational sales email, blah, blah, blah. And this prompt, I can now always customize and change if I see details that are not great. And then once I have that, I can always start a new chat, enter it, and I will get the sales email. And this can be scaled even more, for example, by implementing this prompt in an Excel and then generating bulk emails, uh, each of them specially tailored based on client information also in that database. But that's a bit beyond this tutorial. All right, and that already brings us to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, you might also like to see 10 tips for ChatGPT experts, which I'll release next and I'll link up here if it's already out by the time you see this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.